2015, Land Information New Zealand released another nautical charting survey for the Atlas Bay in Northland, New Zealand. Some of the areas hadn't been surveyed since 1970, so they were really due for an update and surveyed to modern standards. So at the moment we're nearing the end of our bench testing and preparation phase for the Lynns Northland projects. We have the, the bulk of the equipment here in the, in the warehouse in, in Brisbane and that's being shipped to Tauranga in New Zealand for installation onto the vessels. Uh, it involves the, the final parts of the, the bench testing and the packaging and the preparation, export documentation and, and eventual shipping via sea freight to, to New Zealand. We selected two vessels which we'd used previously and we mobilised those vessels from Tauranga. We've got a good base of operations there and it allows us to quickly and efficiently mobilise the vessels and get them ready for the project. We're here in Tauranga, we're mobilising two vessels. We have a 7 metre trailer vessel and a 22 metre offshore work boat um, that we're fitting identical survey systems to. Just left the, the walk for the first time on the tranquil image during the mobilisation for the Downless Bay survey. It's an important part of the project. We're going to put the, the pole down very shortly. We've got the sonars and the uh, single beams and the, and the motion sensor here. It's the first chance that we really get to test that all the systems are talking correctly together and the, and the data quality is going to work. It's still the further test to do afterwards, but this initial test is, is really quite important. It's been a busy past four days, but uh, finally the equipment's on board. It's been checked, it's been installed, we've been out to sea, we've done our wet tests, our calibrations and our check soundings, and now it's uh, time to head north. The Northland area had an abundance of wildlife when we were treated to whales and, and orcas leaping out of the water and just putting on a real show for the survey team, a, a real memorable highlight. In Doubtless Bay we had numerous encounters with dolphins. This is normally an experience that people would like to encounter when you're out on the water. Unfortunately for us, they swum beneath the transducers, which rendered our data that we were acquiring useless. We tried all sorts of scenarios about coming back at different times or even using another boat to try and lead them off. Um, ultimately it just took perseverance of going back to the areas when they weren't there. The project area had a combination of some outer areas in the middle of the bays and a lot of, of coastal areas so we came up with a two vessel solution. The larger vessel to undertake most of the offshore operations working into approximately the 10 metre contour line. We then had a smaller shore based vessel which we would launch at local boat ramps each morning and we would then work inshore from the areas that the larger vessel had surveyed and up to the drying line. The survey was challenging logistically covered two very large bays and a lot of coastal area within those bays requiring launching and recovery of the boat from many different sites. A lot of the launching locations for the vessel were beach launches rather than concrete boat ramps. One of our solutions was to acquire a tractor. And this cut down the transit time required of the boat so that we could launch the boat where it was required to work and recover it at the end of the day. During the project, Chile had a, a massive earthquake uh, across the other side of the Pacific Ocean, but we still suffered the, the effects of the tsunami up to point, point 0.5 of a metre of vertical tide surge. And I was actually quite surprised on how much it affected the, the gauge readings. Some of the inshore tide, gauge was, tide gauges were getting up to 0.5 of a metre um, fluctuation. So, we overcame that by looking at the tide data, analysing it and just looking where we were surveying, looking at our tide model and making sure that we were still meeting specifications. We're just about to do a final 
demobilisation patch test for, 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 for this project. Uh, we do it for longer projects um, to ensure that data quality is, is maintained through the, the whole project. The, the patch test is about uh, the fine alignment between the motion sensor and the, and the sonars. Um, so we do one at the start, ensure that the data that we're collecting is, is correct and we do one for longer projects at the end. Uh, it just ensures that everything that we have collected is, is true and accurate. Um, it's just really ensuring that the data quality is maintained throughout the project. The intended time frame for the project was about eight weeks from commencement through to completion and we achieved that both on schedule and without any incidents. During the survey we collected over 3,700 miles of survey data to be processed and checked and reported to Land Information New Zealand. Yes, yeah, so um, a major part of, of conducting nautical charting surveys is assessing the accuracy of the current chart. Given that Doubtless Bay and Rangano Bay were surveyed over 30 years ago, we have encountered numerous objects during our seabed mapping that weren't identified during previous surveys. I personally found six uncharted rocks of significant um, danger to navigation. Hazards which could pose a risk to boaties. We've now been able to include these on the charts that we produce for the client, which ultimately guarantees the safety of navigation through the areas for mariners. So here on the tranquil image, just anchored up for the evening. She's been on task for 36 days and achieved over 2,000 miles of uh, survey. She's experienced no weather downtime, just been working the areas and working the weather and uh, achieved a lot of good data. She's off home tomorrow for demobilisation and a well-earned break.